dear students welcome to ignu bhic 131 which is history of india from the earliest times up to 300 ce common era so uh, this is the first time this year that this subject is going to be introduced in terms of the paper has changed the syllabus has changed and therefore there are no test previous year questions papers for you to refer to so uh, it becomes uh, quite important to prepare accordingly and therefore in these videos i hope to tell you what are the main topics you need to study and how to go about studying So if you look at the question paper format this is again going to be a new question paper format and if you see there're going to be three sections section A which is 500 words which is actually translating into five pages and what you have is each question has 20 marks and you have a choice to answer two questions out of a multiple choice out of four So it's important not to write more than five pages. You can write five and a half, maximum six. The reason is that you have to really time yourself and not to go overboard writing in one, and therefore not being getting the time to finish your examination. Section B has a twelve mark. It has twelve marks for each question, and you have to answer four of them. not more than 300 words and the multiple choice is out of 8 and section th- c which is short answers has each question has 6 marks you have to answer 2 and the choice is out of 4 so what you can see here is that you need to cover a fair amount of ground and make sure that you do justice now obviously you can't go through the entire syllabus and and uh, read every every block i mean if you can do that that's great but a lot of students a lot of people who are doing you know do not have the time they have multiple jobs they're doing a career and they're studying at the same time so what you really need to do is to be a bit smart and make sure that you study the important bits so that you can cover all the sections so i'll just explain to you what are the most important bits and blocks you need to study in order to fairly cover all the three major sections so if you look at the way the paper has been designed and the way history is being taught at undergraduate level obviously in india what's very important is harappa civilization what we used to call as the indus valley civilization we also realized that in there is always going to be some questions from the first introductory chapters and the introductory block which is about the sources of ancient indian history and archaeology as a source why is that important is because this is the first time that so much of depth has been given to this block and it's obvious that one question will come from here it can either come in the section a of 20 marks or it can definitely come in the section b of 12 marks but you need to prepare yourself for the sources of ancient indian history and i'll talk about these topics in a later video at the same time archaeology as a source you need to really know a bit more about archaeology because also you have to realize that archaeology on its own is becoming a subject which a lot of people are doing in a masters level which wasn't the case even 10 15 years back so it's getting popular and therefore it's good ignu is introducing archaeology at this stage in the undergraduate level the other important block you need to look at is definitely the harappan civilization and in that there are things like decline you have to know about the society how it was constructed and you need to know religious practices the social customs the the evidences which have been found 
and of course the decline and causes of the decline uh, so if you can cover Harappa in details and in depth you're sure that you're going to cover at least one question in assignment A is going to come from the Harappan civilization similarly if you're looking at the Mauryan Empire uh, you need to know about Chandragupta Maurya's coming to power and obviously you need to know about Ashoka in that you need to know how the expansion happened and how they managed to consolidate the kingdom also administration also how the spy network worked also the role of uh, Chanakya or Kautalya as you call it and so if you can cover Maurya you're fairly sure that you have a grip on getting a fair decent amount of questions coming from these blocks. Apart from these, what you need to prepare at the same time is a bit about Vedic society and the pre-post Vedic society. Uh, know about Janapadas and how Mahajanapadas were formed. Uh, something from Buddhism and Jainism, it could be the main teachings, it could be the life, it could also be how it spread, how it became popular. And then if you go right down to the end of the block, you have something on South India and the formation of Tamilaham, how society was in the Tamilaham uh, part of India and the growth of Tamil language and literature and things like how Sangam and how that happened and what is the importance of the language and literature. Fairly, this is, I'm not saying exhaustive. These are for students who are running short of time but need to get some amount of decent marks and therefore can narrow down the entire syllabus of BHIC 131 into like six or eight kind of topics or blocks and therefore go, go there. The strategy for giving an exam like this is to go deep in one subject and uh, with, the, with the hope that they will be covered in the multiple choices. There's no, no point in reading the entire entire syllabus i mean of course it's a great point if you really want to know and study more but again as i said this is for the students who are really struggling to make some time but at the same time need to score some decent marks so in my next video i will talk about more in details of each of these blocks and what to study in each of them till then see you